Um, it started out from, I lost my best friend about a year ago. And um, so I kind of reflected on who I know, who I'm really close with. And I branched out to my immediate family, which at the moment is my boyfriend and my dog. So um, I thought about what would happen if I was gone and how would it would affect them. The series started as my dog's reaction to me being gone or me being um, sort of out of reach with him and how he always wants to be close to, to me. It starts with um, quick marks because him being a dog, it's hard to get him to sit still. So I really wanted to capture the gesture of him and me, which is why the figures aren't finished. Like with this, it's being very gestural, very quick. The amount of time I spend on it is equal to the amount of time that he would sit in that position that he would find us like that. Um, this one's a little bit darker. Um, it has more to do with the closeness of us and him wanting to be loved, wanting to be touched, and it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm sitting, I'm grasping him, or what his reaction would be if something like this were to happen if somebody was hanging. Um, so that's what they're pretty much based off of. I work large so that the figures kind of are enveloped in the white space as opposed to them really having to fill up the space. I want it to be very drastic and very focused on the black that comes out from the white paper. So I incorporated um, a different figure, a separate figure, to include two people and my dog. Um, so this is the new one, newest one in the series. The difference between these now is this is a, a specific person. So I'm trying to finish the figures fully and if they have a face, it's supposed to be a person. If there's no face, then you can't really use it as a surrogate. I like to kind of leave things a little bit ambiguous so that people can place themselves in those situations. but. If I do give somebody a certain face, a certain head, a, s a specific piece of clothing, then it's supposed to be something specific. What can I leave unfinished to give the audience the idea of what's going on, what this figure is doing, and what can I emphasize by leaving something unfinished next to something that is completely developed to really show this is what I want you to look at. So with this one specifically, I really wanted to play on the curve and the unfinished, just, you know, the curve of the female body to really emphasize the shorts and this is the angle that you're looking at and this is the way the figures are proportioned and placed together. Um, and I like to kind of work with half figures um, to use as surrog surrogates for people. A lot of them don't have heads that come off the page that it's not just, they're not trapped in the paper, it's not a scene, it's not a s stage set. There's a lot of things going off, going on behind the scenes as well, which is what a lot of things happen in life. People don't see, the, you know, they only see the surface. So with that, using those techniques, you can also tell a lot from just gender, the way people hold themselves. You know, the female body is curved a little bit more than the stoic male. Um, the boniness that you can get from, you know, the legs of a male compared to some of somebody who's a little bit curvier. So there's little things that I like to play with as well, just using the figure um, to study it and to learn about it a little bit more. Primarily in my undergrad, I was a printmaker, um, drawing is what the degree was together, and that's what I took primarily. Um, I just started painting the summer before I came to LSU, so about a year ago. So I tried to work and incorporate the paint into my my stuff as best as I can. I'm still learning, it's still a process for me. So with these two paintings that I have done, I try to incorporate drawing with paint and my own drawings into the pieces. So they're more like collages as opposed to um, completely painted works. I'm trying to work with wine using a paintbrush as I would a pencil and working with uh, really harsh strokes and lines to flesh a figure out like I would with the side of a piece of charcoal. Well, my work generally resides in the intersection between science and art and spirituality. Those are really fruitful areas of interaction, I think. And so from that comes a lot of different projects. So not all of my work looks the same. Well, playing with the idea of science and also playing with the idea of scale, I've decided to make these what I call squish paintings. Uh, that's just a nickname, but 
I'm making these portraits of people on plate glass and I'm putting a slide cover essentially on top. And so they look like a giant microscope slide. Um, so I, I paint a portrait and then I squish the glass down on top and end up getting this kind of lovely and grotesque portrait. So I got to step back for a minute and tell you I have a background in science. I got a degree in biology. I worked in a lab for a little while. And by, by my own nature, I'm very analytical and very organized, very process oriented. I collect these interesting materials that either are just interesting to me in, in their own right, like these little sha like metal shavings that came from the metal shop, sometimes because I think I might have a future use for them, or other times because I actually have a planned use for them. These, these little fake coins, for instance, and these chocolate coins actually have a purpose in the future. They're, they're going to be part of um, a pinata and or uh, a different type of game that involves people sort of mining the gold out of some sort of situ situation. I started to become interested in petri dishes and I'm still very interested in petri dishes as a form for art making. We have a little growth in here. These are all individual pieces of soap that I cast myself based on molds that were taken from pieces of coal. So this is one of the molds that I've made from a piece of coal and then I heat up wax, or excuse me, I heat up soap and then mix it with charcoal and I cast it into this mold and out pops this little piece of soap that looks just like coal. So you can now wash your hands with it and while washing your hands with the coal, you yourself become dirty. Um, it's my way of ma making a pun out of that horrible term clean coal. So I'm building these pinatas and the pinatas are basically a bunch of mountains, and I'm assembling the pinatas into one giant landscape of pinatas. And I'm gonna hang that landscape, of course, upside down from the ceiling so that we can bust these pinatas open, goodies coming out of them. It's sort of reminiscent of mountaintop removal, a coal mining process. So the result is an object like this. You can see the, the wireframe makes these nice sort of facets that are sort of reminiscent of mountain ridges and wrap that all around this so I have now a pinata. I started this project called barteringthelandscape.com. So I was interested in the trade-off that happens when we decide to mine our nation's land to basically get money, right? So I'm interested in the idea of, of exchange and how we determine something's value. So I created this landscape of these little tiny objects that look a little bit like a mountain, they also look a little bit like a coin. So playing with that idea of commerce, but also the idea of landscape. Um, I've set these all up into what looks like a, a big landscape, and if I photograph it at the right angle, then it really does take on the qualities of a, a vast mountainous landscape. And I've set up an exchange on my website where people can offer a trade for any one of these items. So they determine the value. I don't say that there is a certain value. So they can send money or an object or whatever they want. And whatever price they decide is what this is worth, it's what they get it for. Some interesting things like my friend's homemade blueberry jam, which will be delicious, I'm sure. And I thought this was a really touching one actually because it's something that she made that is, is in exchange for something that I made probably one of the more poetic exchanges I've had so far. Born in 1979, Richard Newsom of New Orleans, Louisiana, received his bachelor's degree in art history from Tulane University. The work of former New Orleans resident takes a variety of forms. Lining the Great Hall of the New Orleans Museum of Art is a collection of intricate collages. Just how intricate is evident close up. The updated frame contains patterns that repeat thousands of modern images like jewels and hubcaps, to appear as multi-layered coats of arms. Gold gilded frames, layered symbols, and armorial shields combined with gold chains and second lines, as well as other elements, create a narrative of power, culture, and tradition. Rashad Newsom merges together video, performance, collage, and sculpture, all while working with ideas of pageantry and dance tradition in hip-hop culture. 